In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a vintage B-movie title that will make your friends think you're a Hollywood pro. Hi there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science. This is the first video in a series of videos where I'm going to teach you how to create an eye-catching, attention-grabbing sci-fi B-movie title. With a little bit of creativity and some simple tips, you'll be able to come up with a title that will make people excited to see your film. So let's get started. In this first part of the series, I'm going to create an asteroid field. And you're welcome to follow along with this lesson on Cinema 4D, or you can find your own image from a simple Google search like I did here. I searched out asteroid alpha, and all you need here is just a simple asteroid that you can take into Photoshop and cut out the alpha channel and you'll be good to go. We're going to create our own asteroid though in this example. So what I have here is a sphere and I've turned off render perfect and I've also selected this option right here. I've created 24 segments and I have a radius of 100. Next thing we're going to do is apply a texture. I have applied a noise filter and you can see here I set the color one to black, the color two to white. I changed the noise to blistered turbulence, octaves to five. Next, I went into the bump channel, also added a noise texture, which you can see here how it's starting to look with that noise channel. Again, black and white, blistered turbulence, octaves five, and I scaled down globally to 20%. And the last thing I did was I went into my displacement map here. I turned it on and sub polygon displacement is not on by default, so it looks like this. Uh, but once I turn it on, it looks a lot more visually interesting like we see here. Now what I did was I applied a layer texture and within that layer, I have three layers of noise. And again, you can see I used blistered turbulence, five octaves and I'll step back, go into my next layer, which is set to this noise here. And global scale was turned up to 100 and I'll step back again. And my last layer is also this texture. Global scale is set to a 1000. And I played around with the seed on a couple of these just to get some different looks. I also reduced the opacity of these top two layers here for 10% and 20%. And that's it. The next thing I did was added two directional lights, which we see here. One is set to a light blue color, an intensity of 150%. It's an infinite light with shadow map set, set to soft. This is my bottom light, which gives it a blue tint. The next one is an infinite light top light. It is set to a value of white intensity, 120% infinite ray traced hard, just to give it a little bit different look. And the last light I turned on here is an Omni light and I'll go ahead and turn it on. It's set to a blue color as well. And the intensity is set down to about 30%, which we can see here no shadow maps. Next, I went to back to my sphere here and I set a keyframe uh, for the rotation. So I have a keyframe set for the H rotation to zero and I set my timeline to 240 frames, went to the very last frame and set it to 180 degrees so that it rotates very slowly like we see here. Last thing I did was go up into my render settings I set my output to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. The reason I did that is because we're going to be using a particle system and it does not recommend any renders over 500 pixels. Set it to all frames, saving it as a PNG sequence, 16 bits per channel, alpha channel. And I also turned on ambient occlusion, which we can find right here under effect. Turned that on default settings. And then I clicked render to render an image sequence, and then I jumped into After Effects. In After Effects, I'm gonna go ahead and import this image sequence as a PNG sequence. Click Open, going to right-click, interpret footage, main, and set this to 24 frames per second because that is how I rendered out of Cinema 4D. And drag this into a new composition, which we see here. And we're gonna set this to full. And I'm gonna go ahead and preview this, and you see we have a really simple animated rock rotation that we are going to use for our asteroid field. We're gonna drag our pre-comp into our composition just like this. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off and we're gonna lock that layer. Put a layer, new, solid, and we're gonna call this particles and click okay. 
And to this layer, we are going to apply RG trap code particular. And once that's loaded up, we're gonna move forward in our timeline here so we can see some particle systems. And we're gonna go ahead and change our emitter to a box. And we're going to increase the size of our box here and actually open up our emitter size here and turn off XYZ link, make it XYZ individual. And we're gonna make our X size pretty wide, probably around 2000. We're also gonna make our Z really big so it encompasses our full composition, maybe something like that. And we're gonna go down into our environment and turn on some wind here. And let's just see how this looks. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to turn off our velocity. So we're gonna turn it from 100 down to zero so that those particles don't fly off everywhere. Next thing we're gonna do here is we are going to set our particles per second to something like 100 and then do page down and turn this to zero. The reason we're doing this is because we don't want particles to keep appearing. So something like this, now we need to extend the life of our particles. So we're gonna open up our particle system here and we're gonna to go to life per second. And let's just turn this up to something like 10. So that they just stay on there. So that's looking pretty good. I think we need to increase the amount of particles per second at the beginning here. So maybe something like 500. Yeah, I like that a lot. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change our particle type from sphere to sprite. And we're gonna open up sprite controls and we're going to select our layer, which is our rotating rock and go ahead and let that load in here. We're also gonna change this from random loop to split clip loop. We'll try that one, see how it looks. Actually, let's go ahead and increase the size of our particles to something like 20. Let's just see how those look. Not too bad. I want something that's visually more interesting. So I wanna go ahead and bring these the particle system closer to the camera. And let's just try and increase the size of our emitter Z to bring them closer to us here, something like that. And let's also decrease the size of emitter Y. So it's more of a narrow field kind of going past us there. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I still think we might need a few more that are closer to us. The reason I used an animated texture here is because we can see this asteroid rotating as it's pushing back. So it gives us more visual interest. Like I said, you can use an image in here and you're, it's gonna still look great. It's just that this is a little bit more visually interesting to look at. Uh, I'm gonna increase the size a little bit more, maybe something like 30. I don't want them to be too big, that's too big. So maybe 25. And let's go ahead and see, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, also, let's go ahead and add some size randomness. So we're gonna turn up our randomness to 100, so they're all different sizes. And let's go and turn on rotation, orient to motion, let's go ahead and turn that on. A lot of these settings are based on just trial and error. So I like to just kind of come in here and play around random rotation, I'm also gonna turn that up, up to 100 so that they all are just rotated slightly differently. And this is looking pretty good. Now, I wanna go ahead and back this layer up in here so I can preview the entire composition. And that's looking pretty good as well. One thing I want to do here is I would really love to start closer to this asteroid. So let's go ahead and add a new camera, layer, new camera. We're gonna keep it one node. We're gonna turn off depth of field for now. 50 millimeters, fine. Click OK. And with this, we're going to push in closer to our asteroid field here. And I wanna play around a little bit more with the size of this, maybe 5,000, maybe 3,000. Let's make the emitter even bigger. Let's go to 10,000. Let's make the Y just a little bit bigger. Let's try 350. That's looking pretty good. We can also go ahead and turn on our depth of field here. Go we'll ahead, hit AA and turn on depth of field, something like that. And maybe push this out a little bit. And that's on and that's off. Gives a little bit more depth to the piece. And there we go, it's looking really nice as well. And let's go ahead and bring in these nebula images. These are just still images or PNGs with transparent backgrounds that I played around with Photoshop and got them to have some alpha channels to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this one down, maybe about 50. Bring it over in here. 
Take the next one, we'll scale it down to about 30. Bring it over in here. And this last one, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and hit scale and bring it down pretty small, something maybe in here. And to all three of them, we're gonna select them and go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And we're gonna create a blur of about 20. So all three now have a blur of about 20 on them. We're gonna unsolo them. And you can see it creates just some more depth back there in the background. And to wrap this video up, let's go ahead and increase the size back up of the asteroids to about 35. And we'll go ahead and preview this. And that is looking really cool. So that's gonna do it for video number one in the series. I hope that you've really enjoyed this lesson on creating a sci-fi B-movie title. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Cameron and this is Motion Science.